Hello, and welcome to another special episode of No Small Rolls, where we're knee-high in a swamp and our dead exes are screaming at us. Uh. I'm David Knight, your dungeon master, and whilst Jasper has been pulled away by sentient vines, we're hoping that our other guest doesn't meet the same fate. It's Jeremy Cobb! Hello! Now, Jeremy, are you ready to face your past? No, but uh, it seems as though I don't have any choice in the matter as my past has hunted me down and confronted me with a small army. (laughs) I mean, if it's going to come for you, this is the way you'd want it to happen, right? At least it's dramatic. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like that that needs to be a tattoo. (laughs) (laughs) At least it's dramatic. Well, as we prepare ourselves, let's cue the theme tune. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice Seize your sheets and d20 Let's play D&D Your hanging characters your daggers in each hand You will discuss what you must, but even best lay plans Take a turn when checks are missed Roll initiative Brandish your blade As the tavern keeper Aeneas rose as a spore spawn, Dwayne and Tharnak acted swiftly, stabbing him with a heated dagger and then banishing him to another plane. The issue quickly dealt with, Judge investigated the vines that the red flower had appeared on, and with Dwayne's universal speech, they learned that the rotweed had originated from a crack caused by an elf. Judge and Tharnak spoke with their contact Bartosh, who directed them towards Moss Hollow, mentioning that a research team of elves had headed out that way a few weeks earlier. His assistant, Ricky, was sent to guide you further out. As you all left Paladosa, Valerie and her crew arrived, still hunting their dragon quarry. Whilst their search was fruitless, a mysterious blonde halfling, Arthur, appeared and offered to help. Resting on their journey, Dwayne shared his past with his new companions, and as they continued on, a yelp from Tharnak alerted a nearby spore spawn, giant crocodile, to their presence. Vines launched out, dragging Tharnak away. Then Valerie and her crew came rushing in, and as the crocodile ended poor Ricky's life, Judge managed to deliver a fatal blow. Faced with his ex-husband, however, Dwayne spoke up, only for Arthur's anguished scream to silence the wilderness around them. So that's where we pick it up. Arthur is stood on the back of this dead, fungal, bark-like crocodile staring at you. His his pained scream silenced everybody and everything around you. And he just stares at you with those, those beautiful blue eyes. And he just repeats himself in the silence. Why did you leave me? Can I roll a wisdom check for Dwayne in this moment? (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Okay. Dwayne stares into the beautiful blue eyes of his husband. He looks at the the rather frightening people that have accompanied his husband here. He looks at the corpse of the dead fungal crocodile, as well as uh, his ally, the judge, and wonders briefly about the fate of his other ally. Uh, Looks around... See, realize he's spent so many spells. He's had just the worst possible day. <laughs> and as he stands there, knees uh, knocking, he casts Dimension Door. And 
disappears, <laughs> teleports 500 feet away, and then just start. He just takes off running I through. Damn you, you bastard! Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> just I just straight disappear. Damn you! Amazing. Uh, Tarnak. <laughs> Tarnak! <laughs> Wait, no! Come back! Come back! <laughs> the hell is happening? Yo! You're there! What the fuck? Who are you? What do you want? I want the dragon! What dragon? There's no dragon here! It's a damn crocodile! I thought that was the dragon! What? But he's run off! Well, it's dead! I killed it! We I killed need it! The, the dragon. dragon's dead! My friend is underwater! Help me search Where her! Where is it? Where did he go? Why are you shouting at me? My friend is underwater! Judge just dives <laughs> underneath the swamp to try and find Tarnak. Is Tarnak a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> Do we see where Dwayne's gone? Um, you two don't. Uh, you can see Arthur just kind of like his, his shoulders slump slightly. Deep sigh. And then he, he like just slightly turns in one direction and starts walking into the bushes. Um, Dwayne, um, how do, with Dimension Door, if you don't necessarily see where you're going, are there any drawbacks? Uh, it just says... You can describe the place by staying mm-hmm. distance and direction. You could bring along objects or bring along one willing creature. Uh, but if I if I teleport into a space already occupied by an object or a creature, you and any creature traveling with you each take four d six force damage, and the spell fails to teleport you. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you haven't. The the, the spell has worked, uh, but you find yourself slightly on the edge of a. Uh, sort of a sli- um, more of like a rocky patch, uh, less swampy. The area that you found yourself in now, and as soon as you land there, it crumbles underneath you. Can you make a, a quick dexterity saving throw, please? Oh no! Uh, oh, okay, that's a twenty-three. Whew. Twenty-three. Oh no, it's all right. So, um, yeah, the um, the rocks give way beneath you, and you kind of stumble back a little bit uh, and watch them as they sort of tumble down. The area, though, as you sort of fall back, you realize that the bushes and the vines are even more overgrown uh, here. Similar kind of... um, You can tell it's the same rot weed that's sort of been expanding everywhere. Um, So there is some comfort that you're like, well, I can talk to this thing at least. But Hmm. at the same time, there's also the fear that any any one of these plants surrounding you could turn on you at any point. And yeah, so you stumble back like into a bush, right yourself, and just take a very quick breath. What are you doing? Uh, do I see no way forward? So um, where you've landed, you can see that the um, the ground kind of goes down into a, a fairly shallow ravine. Otherwise, it's it's beating your way through bushes in any direction. I think at the moment, and probably for a minute or two, Dwayne is Dwayne has panicked. Mm-hmm. I think this is this is <laughs> this is Dwayne fully losing his cool uh, and just fleeing that scream uh, and the amount of pain that was contained in it. Uh, I think it's it's like when uh, a sound resonates fre- like a frequency with like an object, like a metal object. So you hear mm-hmm. the object start ringing. I think that mm-hmm. scream that Art let out resonated with Dwayne and like Dwayne's heart and Dwayne's heart was ringing with that same sound and he just fully panicked I think Dwayne is just running probably stumbles down the ravine uh, and mm-hmm. is just like just cra- like you know crawling all fours getting up slipping just trying uh, desperately to get away until uh, for probably a couple minutes until like he would probably collapse just out of breath because it because of his panic Mm -hmm. uh and then like it would occur to him this this doesn't change anything art is still coming and not only that he starts to like realize like oh wait i i had people i i befriended people i had oh no i've done it again uh sitting there like (laughs) why do i keep doing this to myself i think that's what Dwayne. i think he's sitting there just like Fabuloso, you've really done it this time. Why? <laughs> Why every time you just go down he just starts punching the the mud next to him. Uh mm-hmm. and probably quietly sobbing into his hand for a minute oh. or two. Aww. Yeah, feeling all of the emotions, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's um it's it is still quite quiet around you. So as you've sort of fallen into this ravine and sort of stumbled one uh, along and sort of sat down and you're having this moment it's like your own words are slightly echoing and that's really the only thing that you can hear at the moment 
There's a brief breeze that sort of wafts down through the through the bushes into this into this uh, part of the the marshland, but there there's still no sounds of any other thing. So you can only hear your own words, your own tears, your own your own pain sort of echoing around you, which is not making it any better. I'm sure. Mm. How long do you stay there for? Mm. Um. I think uh, let me let me talk through this because I'm not mm. sure. I think Dwayne is one of those like, why every time? How long can I keep running like? Art, why won't you? You can't understand. I did it for a reason. I couldn't have stayed. I couldn't look. I could. I couldn't have been with first. I lo- like he can't even finish a sentence. It's like every single thought mm-hmm. is like, oh, why? I why can't you understand why I had to do what I did? Why can't you just leave me alone and under and like let me live my life? Why can't you just pass on? I keep first. I'm losing all these other people. I just lost Gwendolyn again. I got Gwendolyn back and lost her again. I made new friends, lost them, uh, and and I think he finally would. Uh, I think he'd start looking around like he always does uh, his instinct for another, the next jo- the, not job, but the next uh, the next thing, the next thing to pursue the next, like, I think he he's reminded of like the vine situation and he's like, uh, I can distract myself with this. Mm-hmm. I can move. I can shove my pain away and shove uh, this failure away and move on and grab onto this instead and i think he'd start looking around for some of the vines mm-hmm. uh, again to see if he can maybe get to the bottom of this at least yeah um and whilst they haven't fallen that far into the ravine it's really not that hard to just like climb out a little bit and find more of them they're scattered everywhere throughout this this space so yeah, very easy. You sort of you find a couple of like gnarl that are like winding their way. Even as you're sat watching them, you can see them growing and expanding and pushing into the the the, the wet mud and the and trying to wrap around the drier rocks and like just expanding to every inch like the worst kind of weed. Other plants are getting suffocated as they're being like sort of tightened and um, sort of dragged and pushed out of the way, all in a very slow, creepy, menacing way uh, at the top of this ravine. <sighs> Can I follow the path of the vines to try and see where they lead? Yeah, absolutely. Make a uh, make a survival check to see if you can. It says they're growing in every direction. Okay, that's a natural twenty. So that's a twenty-three. Oh, that's beautiful. In which case, what I will say is, as you sort of make the decision to focus on the vine situation, focus on the rot weed. You sort of half touch one to figure out like where it's going. And as you start following it along, you realize that they are parting ever so slightly where you walk. And then further ahead of you, as you're sort of following the thicker vines, they're even, the the bushes themselves seem to be moving out of the way and showing you a path toward their origin. I'm going to follow it. So you start pushing your way through through the foliage um and it's not long maybe another sort of 10 15 minutes of walking when you come to a a a moss covered opening the area has become a little bit rockier a little bit drier less marshy and you've wound your way down into another sort of small valley um and there is this the the rocks are covered in moss and there is a an opening to what you can assume is a cave and all of the uh, the rot weed has completely moved out of the way to show you the way inside. Uh, I think part of Dwayne, a uh, part of Dwayne's subconscious says, "This feels like an apt metaphor," <laughs> uh, and descends into the the uh, clearly accursed cave. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as you head inside, first of all, it is very dark. I mean, it's nighttime anyway. It's probably sort of three o'clock in the morning by this point but um with the the sort of the vines and the plants moving out of the way it's it you're not bumping into too many rocky walls luckily uh, every time you do bump into something it's always covered in leaves so it's a softer softer mossier space uh the further you head in though um sort of the narrower this this walkway becomes until suddenly it opens up into a an antechamber with uh, sort of large pillars separating it from a wider room uh, beyond. Again, all completely shadowed and in darkness. 
But in this antechamber, what does catch your attention is a glowing magical dome in the center of it. The plants have completely overgrown this entire space as well. Um, and you can see that they've kind of like half wrapped themselves around this, this uh, translucent dome. Um, and whilst you can't see directly inside, you do see a shape of a person moving about. Um, I'd like to say, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, he- hello there. He- hello? Is someone out there? Um, y- yes. Uh, hello. I've, I've, uh, my name is, <clears throat> my name is Dwayne Fab- Fabulosa. I've, uh, I've come to help you. Y- you have? The, the plants out there, they're not trying to kill you? Uh, well, they, they, they tried earlier, believe me. Uh, but we seem to be on, uh, better terms these days. Right, uh, so you're, 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 uh, you're here to help me. Um, okay, uh, well, I, 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 I can't drop this, uh, dome right now because if I do, then, uh, then they, they will get me, but I, I can let you in. So, uh, make sure your, your hands are up and you, you're not trying any funny business because I, uh, I will, I will, uh, shoot you with fire. So, um, be, I will, will, will shoot you. So, uh, make sure that you're, you're, you're not trying any funny business and you can come in here and I, I will talk to you. Okay. So, uh, uh I'm letting you in now. Okay. Right. Here, here I come. I think Dwayne is going to try and do a quick half-hearted flourish with prestidigitation to try and like clean off his hands and mustache and everything to try and make himself look a little bit more presentable maybe his boots but i i imagine it's kind of like a half just a really half-baked job yeah Uh, and so it's very he just has very patchy uh dirt and mud as he like steps forward with his little hands in the air uh so as you as you as you enter this hut uh you are presented with a elf um with kind of greenish skin um messy uh gray and brown hair kind of piled up on top of her head this hut does not smell good (laughs) and does not smell good it does seem like she has been in it for quite a while uh, she looks pretty rough. She looks haggard and stressed. She's wearing kind of like khaki, um, like uh, shirt and shorts and practical boots and socks. Uh, with and um, but yeah, she looks just very, very stressed and does not smell good. Uh, I think Dwayne, as he steps forward, uh, is going to try and like kind of subtly cast prestidigitation to clean as much of this room as possible <laughs> and just emit <laughs> positive odors. <laughs> I think, I think as, as he steps in, he's kind of like, hello. <laughs> 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 he- he- hello. Oh, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, sorry, what's your name? Uh, oh, um, I, I am Professor Fid, uh, Triffany Fid, but uh, you can call me Triff or Triffany or Professor Fid. I don't care, actually. I really don't care. Yes. Um, I care about fixing the situation outside. Uh, right now, tell me, uh, what what's it like out there? How bad is it getting? Oh, it's, um, ooh, it's really smelly. Uh, really, uh, <laughs> it's be- excuse me, I need to wipe my eyes. That watering. Um, I, I've been in here for a week, okay? Oh. I have done my very best. I tried burying it, but, you know, it's it's hard, okay? There, uh, <laughs> I hope it's not too hard, <laughs> or else you're really in trouble. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. <laughs> um, Dwayne's going to say yes. Um, yes, you said uh, Triff or Professor is what you prefer? Yeah, just whatever you want to call me. Uh, Triff is fine, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Triff, the uh, situation's rather dire, I'm afraid. Oh, God. Uh, there's the, the, the vines have spread into the nearby towns throughout the forest. Oh, they seem God. to be choking the life out of the forest. Uh, they they even spread into the town, into a, into a, a tavern. Uh, and un- unfortunately colonized one of the people inside of the tavern oh. uh, who became a vicious, terrifying uh, fungal monster. We had to burn the whole building down. Oh, that's that's awful and fascinating. I, I <laughs> wish I'd been able to watch that happen at the time just to be able to document it and see how... The, but, but obviously it's terrible, it's terrible, but oh my goodness, I didn't realize that 
such a thing could occur. Very interesting. Um, right, right. So, uh, you, you'd say it's definitely bad out there, then? Yes, defo. Defo. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Um, now, uh, uh, I, uh... May have something to do with the uh, the origin of this uh, phenomenon. Um, myself and my team were here, uh, alas, and uh, rather inconveniently, my team were devoured uh, and uh, repurposed by the plants. Um, oh. I was able to just about uh, get away, but uh, realizing I wasn't going to be able to outrun all this rot weed and vines i i decided to set up this hut i i've been just recasting and recasting every eight hours uh, right hence i'm Triff's tiny <laughs> hut <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed my tiny hut yes. it's very tiny um just like you you're very small uh <laughs> i'm not good with people so um <clears throat> i have been working whilst i've been in here um we we discovered a natural source of energy, uh, a something that we decided to track down. Uh, seems to be some sort of magical rock uh, formation, a, a henge, if you will. Uh, uh, now, yeah, I will, yes. Uh, you will. Great, great. You're with me. Uh, fantastic. I try to dumb it down for... Uh, the people who aren't of my understanding and learning is you see, I imagine you're some sort of musical person from looking at you. Uh, <laughs> Guilty yeah. as charged. <laughs> yeah. So just uh, let me know if you can like keep up. I'm trying to, you know, keep it nice and understandable for you. Um, you're doing but wonderful. what happened? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, what happened was um, we decided to do some experiments on this uh, natural energy. I, I'm personally particularly interested in plants. It's kind of a hobby of mine as much as uh, my uh, academic uh, research. Uh, and all we've been working on how that they communicate with each other. You know, uh, plants are really complex things, uh, more complex than people and much more tolerable, in my opinion. Um, we decided to use the energy from this henge to... Uh, well, enhance their communication. Uh, we wanted to see if we could learn how to understand them easier. Uh, uh. However, uh, one of the stones got damaged and formed a crack, <laughs> allowing the internal magic to rupture through uh, and rapidly expand the plant that we were working on. Uh, that, that, that's when it consumed my team. Oh, oh. was that your crack? Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Well remembered. We, I've been hearing so much about this crack, and it, I, I've found the source. You, you, so yes, speak. yes, you found the source and my crack. Yes, your crack consumed the rest of your team. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I suppose that is one way that we could, uh, yeah, put it. It was a, a mighty, mighty crack, but uh, I think it's been gaping for far too long now, and oh. time to... <laughs> <laughs> yes, time to close up shop, so to speak. Oh. <laughs> yes. Sort of, uh, it needs to be... <laughs> 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 it should be more of an exit only rather than uh, a situation. Rather, yes, I'm right with you. Um, yes, thank you for explaining. Um, I, I think Dwayne starts to look around. Um, I might be able to help. I, I hope... I hope I can help. I um, hope you can help. Yes. Um, I do uh, have an ability that would allow me to speak with the plants. Uh, however, unfortunately, I've already used it for today. Um, is this, is your, is your situation urgent? Well, uh, I mean, you've told me what the situation is like outside. It seems that it's just yes. expanding and expanding, and it could get a lot worse <laughs> uh, if we don't true. cut it off at the crack, uh, so to speak. So, yes. um, <laughs> pinch it off, so to speak. Yes, absolutely. There we go. That's a yes. great, great terminology you've got there. Wow, there's possibly a, a wizard within you. Maybe I don't know. Uh, anyway, there has been. I imagine. <laughs> I. I. Mm, yeah. Uh, sorry, I've I I get I'm out of control right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> I th I guess so. So am I. So am I. Um, look, I I have been able to uh, 
whilst I've been in here, I start to work out a ritual that I think is going to allow me to uh, cut off this, uh, what does it, uh, what did you use? Snip it off uh, this crack. Yes, Um, yes. Close it up, you know. Uh, So I think... I think it's going to work, but it is going to take a lot of magic, a lot of my personal resources, and I am going to need to be defended from the rest of this rotweed while I do this. Uh, I potentially need some more magical resources if you've got those sorts uh, of talents about you, but I I don't think the two of us are going to be able to do this. I, I, do you have any friends, perhaps? Uh... Well, uh, I've, I've certainly had friends. Um, well done. Yes, I, uh, I think Dwayne looks down and says, um, I'm afraid I've come alone. Ah. Um. Okay. I, I do have access to magics, although I have rather depleted myself. Uh, mm. I've, it's, uh, Dwayne just looks up and says, it's been a long night. A very, very long night. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Triff. It, it's not fair for me to be dumping all this on you. I've, I've, um, I had some companions, you see. I was trying to bring other people with me, and uh, we fell afoul of some of the, the funguses, fungi, fungi and uh, also we were tracked down, you see. We were being... I think it's more more accurate to say I was being hunted uh, by. Well, actually, I don't know who most of them were, but one of them was somebody who was very, very close to me, indeed. And um, well, uh, rather than confront this person, I fled. Uh, I told myself it was so I could finish the mission and help you, but. Um, it, it was it was because I was afraid. Oh, scared. Yes. Ah. Yes. Uh, yes, I panicked. Ah. And as I so often do, I, I ran instead of trying to confront the root of the issue. And so, I've I've come alone. Um, hmm. If if you're willing to wait for me to recharge my magics, then we can make a go of it tomorrow. I can't guarantee anything, except I'll do my best not to run this time. Well, that that would be appreciated. Um, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of friendships and people uh, myself, Uh, so I I understand running away from people. They are weird. Um, As are you. but um, it would be useful if, uh, once you've rested yourself, if you could m- maybe get a bit more muscle. Uh, I, 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 th- I think we might be struggling, but you know, have a rest. You, you look like you've, you've had a tough day. Uh, she gives kind of a awkward pat on the shoulder, just like she doesn't really know how to do this sort of thing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Dwayne perfumes the hand with his with his passage digitation. Yeah, you might you you might want to sleep on on that side of the dome. It's uh, yes. it's the nicest. Yeah, I can. Um, well, I, this spell, I could just clean this whole thing. Really, oh. I've just uh, well, uh, <laughs> Dwayne, great. Where did you try to bury it? Sorry, just po- pointed out. I could get rid of it all. Yeah, oh. Please, please do, please do. I mean, I, I, I've got used to the smell. You know, it kind of is a, as a musk now. But uh, yeah. If you, um, yes. Okay. Here we yeah. go. Uh, Dwayne's just gonna quickly uh, sort of toddle around the room and er, toddle around the hut and sort of clean everything with prestidigita- prestidigitation to the point where, like, there, there's not some of the dirt that was on the ground is now gone. It's like, <laughs> like Dwayne, we're going- Dwayne and Enkidu should have hung out together more. <laughs> uh, at which point, Dwayne, I think, is gonna collapse to the ground and lean against the side of the dome uh, and, and look up at Triff and say. Uh, Triff, you said your your entire team was consumed by plants. Well, consumed by the crack in the stone. Uh, and the plants. It, it was a mess, you know. 
how the the the, the plant itself it, it we we were using once the crack happened the plant that we were working on it it, it started to grow and that's when yeah. it started to like you know, oh, oh, take them in yes may i ask you a question a personal question oh uh, you may ask it i don't know if i'll answer but let's see <laughs> okay that's fair um w- did it bother you to see the people that you had worked with, people who, whom I presume you, you cared about, uh, lose their lives because of a, a mistake you made? Um, well, I... Uh, it was terribly inconvenient. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, and, and I, 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 if I make it out alive, I, I will send uh, my condolences to the families. Um, I think one of them was called Bob. Oh, yes. Uh, so I take it you and Bob, uh, were not particularly close. I, I'm not particularly close with people, uh. Yes, you said. I, I, I like plants and, uh, I, I talk to people when I need to, but maybe I'm not the best example of, uh connection uh hmm. perhaps i could learn a thing or two from you but, <laughs> i mean let's turn the question back on yourself do if they were your friends would you have felt bad i think it would have haunted me for the rest of my life well that sounds incredibly distracting uh yes i suppose you might say disruptive mm. To all future engagements, relationships, ventures, sleeping, eating, having peace of mind. Uh, yes, very, very disruptive, distracting, indeed. And uh, if 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 I were if I were coming to you as 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 a friend, mm. she does in air quotes. Uh, and I said that I was having these problems. Would, would you give me advice? Uh, well, uh, if you were interested in, in advice, of course, uh, then I would. Uh, what, what, what would you tell me to do? Um, well, I, I think I would tell you to stop running and do whatever you had to do to make it right. Hmm. Uh, Yes, whether that was, of course, if they're dead, you you can't do anything for them anymore. Nope. Uh, Unless they were like coming back from the grave or something. (laughs) 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 That would be that'd be a lot to deal with, wouldn't it? (laughs) Oh yes. Yes. uh, But. Say you, uh, they had a family member who looked shockingly exactly like them, and you could go speak to that individual. Perhaps even had the exact same name, just a cousin who was uncomfortably similar. Mm. Uh, Perhaps you could go and speak to the cousin and try and give the family whatever peace they could have gotten. Tell them that their death was a tragedy and that you're sorry that you couldn't have done more to have tried to help them and you're you're sorry that you made the mistake you didn't realize you weren't trying to do anything wrong you were just trying to you were just trying to survive like all of us out here and you never meant to to put them in that situation and you never you certainly never meant for them to well, for them for what happened to have happened and you you don't think you can make it up to them? Well, yeah, some sometimes experiments work, sometimes they fail. But if you don't try them all out, then how will you have conclusive results? So, sounds to me like you've experimented with running away. Sounds like it's time to try a different route, maybe listen to your own advice. 
uh, you know, Triff, uh, I think you're a little better with people than you give yourself credit for. Oh, God, really? <laughs> yes, it's one of those hidden talents. <laughs> Take it from someone who knows how to talk to people. I, I think you have a way with words. <laughs> oh, well, uh, there we go. Uh, the, what, uh, sitting in a hut by yourself will do to you. You talk to a person who just walks in and, <laughs> yeah, I did that. Go me. Do you, uh, do you enjoy music, Triff? Uh, do you know what? I Actually, I do. I, I like to play music to my plants. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's uh, <laughs> correct, uh, but I believe uh, that it does help them grow a little bit better. Uh, so I, I, I do like music for, for that purpose. Mm. Yes, music to help us grow. That <laughs> sounds very nice. Why don't I provide us with some uh, growth music? Uh, and Dwayne's just gonna pull out his uh, little his his hurdy gurdy and start playing uh, a mournful, uh, soothing tune on it. Uh, and I think he's pretty much done talking for the evening. Mm-hmm. I mean, music to help help us grow. That's definitely the episode title now. So. <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. It's a lovely interaction. <laughs> Grace here, keeping you updated with all things No Small Roles related. We are thrilled to have just hit 1,000 followers on Twitter. To mark this auspicious occasion, we are doing a giveaway. So if you want to win yourself a copy of Monsters of the Multiverse on D&D Beyond, head over to Twitter. If you're not already following us, this is the perfect time to do it. We are at No Small Roles, that's role spelt R-O-L-L-S. Get yourself onto our Twitter page and retweet the original post about the giveaway. One winner will be drawn at random on Sunday the 19th of June at 6pm BST. Best of luck to you all. Regular listeners of No Small Roles will know that summer is always a particularly busy time for the cast. We currently have me in Moulin Rouge, Ben in Dragons and Mythical Beasts, Vicky in Alice and Arialand, and next up, well, we have Double Trouble. Daryl and Vicky in The Comedy of Errors, touring Fuller's pubs around the UK. Yes, the wonderful open bar theatre company have two smashing plays on the road again this summer, both with costume by me and music by the one and only David Knight. So if you love a bit of raucous Shakespeare with a pint in hand, go and check out Open Bar Theatre Company's Shakespeare in the Garden. But I'm not stopping with the show shout-outs just yet. On the 24th of June, a very special event is coming to Longfield Hall in the south of London to celebrate Pride Month. Love is Live, the Platinum Edition, is a show full of cabaret queer royalty. The lineup is epic. We have the legendary drag queen Lily Snatchdragon, the sensational Pie the Mime, who recently made a memorable appearance on Britain's Got Talent. Bringing all their non binary finery, we have Rudy Givenchy. Giving us comedy, we have the hilarious Emily Bampton and newcomer to the scene, Wings Chan. Even I will be making an appearance as my drag king alter ego, Luke Warm. This show is for one night only and not to be missed. You'll find information about these incredible productions in our show notes. And if you do come along, make sure you say hi. We love getting to meet listeners of the show in real life. Well, that is all from me for now. Let's get you back to the adventure. So, yeah, as you, uh, the two of you sort of sit in each other's company, just listening to this music, probably about two hours go by. Again, so you maybe have a little bit of small talk, share some food. When you're interrupted by the sound of commotion coming from outside of the dome. There's clattering of, of feet on stone. There are shouts um, from a couple of different voices and panic and then surprise and then maybe a little bit more panic um, as uh, three figures sort of collide with the outside of the dome. 
uh, Judge Valerie and Arthur. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, here yeah, they come to ruin the mood. I was, I was, the mood. Just <laughs> I was like, who now? What's happening? <laughs> Chris pops up. Hello. <laughs> Three more people enter the Zoom chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, um, outside the dome, the plants are not being as nice to uh, you guys as as they were to, to Dwayne. Um, and you are having to fight back. You have been battle scarred, like you're coughing all over the place where some of them have sprayed spores into your face. You're holding it back, luckily, but you are not in a good position right now. These damn plets, I will cut every last one of them. What they did to me. Die, you whiny spores! My friend! Took three of my friends! Triff, I know these people. These are the people I know. The Triff, Triff, let them in. You're, you're, Triff, are you sure? They yeah. sound scary. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, I know them. I know them. God, die, die. That blood. Okay, uh, uh, co- come in, come in. Don't, I will shoot you with fire. I will cut you with an axe. Hell, inside of the dome, inside the dome. It's, you. it's... You. You, you bastard. You left Tarnak to die. Tarnak is... Oh, and he's coming after Dwayne. <laughs> uh, th- <laughs> Tiffany gets ready with like uh, some sort of like fiery thing. Uh, of, mm-hmm. You know, one of those spells that wizards do. <laughs> yeah. Val- Valerie stands there like, I'm never in this position where I don't know who to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a bit of like a weird showdown where like on each side of the of this dome you've got Triff there with some fire. Dwayne just shocked the fact that Arthur is once again stood in front of him. <laughs> Arthur looks like it's probably the worst you've seen him, Dwayne. <laughs> it looks haggard. He looks covered in mud. And uh, normally when he's been haunting you, he's been very pristine. But now he just looks like a normal person. Um, Valerie is ready there. Judge has got shooting daggers at you, Dwayne. Uh, confused by the uh, the fire wielding elf in the corner. What are you all doing? Those vines have got to die soon. Uh, I think Dwayne was initially like scared of Judge when he comes running <laughs> in, <laughs> weapon drawn. But as soon as he sees Art standing there, uh, looking alive, I mean, just based on this, like. Like, he looks like he's actually been physically interacting with stuff. Like, it's not Mm. the ghostly apparition, I think, that Dwayne has kind of been used to. I think Dwayne is just, like, taken with this. Because it's, of course, he's scared of art in general. But, like, now it's like, whoa. And it's like, I think the, the, the feeling that Dwayne has is of being taken back to when when art actually was alive. And I think he looks at art and he says, oh. My dear, you, you're filthy. Wait, let me... Uh, and starts to, like, starts to reach forward and cast Prestidigitation to try and clean uh, Art off a little bit. Uh, and then realizes, like, what he's doing. He says, oh, um, I mean, uh... uh hello? Judge by this time has grabbed Dwayne by the, by the <laughs> front of his shirt and just <laughs> shoved him up against the wall. And, like, <laughs> what the hell do you think you're pulling... <laughs> Tarnak is dead, damn it. Oh, I'm I'm terribly sorry, Judge. I look, I I'm a coward. I was scared of um well, you see that uh, this fellow standing there. Um it's my e- ex-husband. Damn Just kind of looking at art. Are we still? <laughs> You're <laughs> and he just lets lets him go and he just he he doesn't know what to do with himself he's like so much is happening right now i'm so sorry judge i know what it's like to lose someone close to you it's never easy if if there's anything i can do to help oh whether we can recover the body together look i know people who who might be capable of of resurrecting your friend resurrect I need to find him first. I've been searching for hours. I haven't seen a single... And he he just sits down. He's a mess. Like, he's... Tarnak was my... Tarnak was my only friend. My only friend. I only had to keep him safe and I couldn't... What are you? Is this what you do? 
You flip from person to person. You, 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 you leave them. You hurt them. You use them. You, ah, you, you're a curse. You're a curse. That's what you are. Damn it. And he's just head in his hands. Just, just, ah. Just frustrated. Listen, friend, in this scenario, what you must understand is this is not your fault. It's his. And she points a meaty finger at Dwayne. Yeah. Don't blame yourself, Judge. Don't blame yourself. Blame him. Ah! Jolly good. She's right. Yes. I do blame you. Now, I know we're in a situation right now. And I know these plants are killing people everywhere, left, right and center, and they killed Tarnak. And we need to solve this first. We but- kill all the plants! <sighs> yeah, she sounds crazy, but she's right. We killed the damn plants. We gotta find Tarnak next. I just... Uh, w- w- well, uh, actually, uh, uh, it- <clears throat> hello. Uh, Professor Triffany Fred has kind of... Uh, she- she's kind of... Uh, got herself away from everybody as much as possible but uh, she's kind of seeing people calm down a bit and maybe this is the time to talk so uh, hello i am uh professor triffany fed uh i uh i i might be able to help with the plant situation um uh cut it off at the source uh i i i uh m- Maybe slightly involved with how this has all happened, uh, but uh, I I do have a plan in mind. Uh, but what I really need is uh, uh, people like all of you that uh, have muscle who can uh, fight off these plants, kill these plants while I do the ritual. If any of you um, I'll do that. Yes, great. definitely me. Oh, yes. oh, fa- fa- fantastic! Yes, you, you look uh, like you're ready to fight those plants. Yeah, uh, I wanted just to put an end to this. So, damn it! Yes, all right. Oh, okay. Just, an end let's to just... the plants and an end to the dragons. Ha ha! Oh, you're you're very loud. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. Very good. Very good. Uh, just tell us what to do. Um, I I believe uh, you, your uh, friend. She does air quotes once again, pointing at Dwayne here. Who needs to to rest a little bit? Um, I don't know if you do too, but uh, I I I could do with you all being firing on all cylinders uh, to be able to uh, complete my plan. Okay, so uh, if you need a little rest, take yourself a little seat, try and calm down. Uh, I prefer a more relaxed atmosphere with oh, inside voices. That'd be great. I'll try my best. <laughs> Dwayne's going to stand up, I think, uh, and say, no, I, I think we shouldn't drag this out any longer. Let's, let's get rid of the curse. Sooner the better. Let's do this now. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you're ready, then, um, uh, what we will need to do is we will need to get to the source of uh, where all these plants are getting all their extra uh, powers and what have you. Um, uh, it's a crack in a stone uh, not too far from here. Um, we are going to need to get up to uh, within five feet of it to for me to be able to start the ritual. Now, I am going to be putting as much of my own personal uh, power and resources into it. If any of you are uh, magically inclined, uh, it would be fantastic if you could also uh, send some of your powers that way. But we're probably going to be having to fight off uh, the plants at same time so uh whatever your skills are uh that'd be great if you could do that uh it is gonna be a lot of resources though so uh fine just so long as i can i can hit something oh i'm with you there judge <sighs> not a stitch of magic in me but i'll fight to, i'll fight i'll, I'll fight yeah. oh fantastic that's that's exactly the, the spirit uh i need <laughs> as a as a point as you're looking at the the three that have just stumbled in Triffany. Valerie, Judge, and Arthur are all hurt. They are. You're not at full capacity, oh, we'll say. Um. So, I mean, I'm healthy. <laughs> well, rolling some dice in the fight to get here. Oh, um, right, okay. Val, you've lost 19 hit points, and Judge, you've lost 15. Uh, okay, never so, mind. <laughs> I'm all right, though. Just, you know, you know it's, it's yeah, yeah. not necessarily enough to take you out, but enough that, you know, it, it, it hurt you if you don't rest. Yeah, I'll say. Who seems to be the most hurt? I'm cool. Um, I could probably help out if I'm in the mood. Um, because <laughs> Dwayne has Dwayne has Dwayne can help with healing if anybody oh, needs actually, it. I, mm-hmm. I can't. I gave all my healing to you. <laughs> so how about that? Maybe we 
we should just have a little snooze. Yeah, I I think you all look uh, absolutely rubbish right now. Uh, You look like you need a rest, so uh, I'm going to have to enforce that, actually. Right. I suggest you go for a rest. And she uses a suggestion. (laughs) Ooh, (laughs) amazing. Uh, what do they need to make? Is it wisdom saves or? Uh, Did you just say you cast suggestion? Yeah. Oh, oh amazing. Just, amazing. She, just, she doesn't really know how to persuade people how to do things, so it's all <laughs> she can really. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a wisdom save. Thank you. Is that a charm? I think it is. If it's charm, it doesn't work on judge. Uh, but Vicky and uh, Jeremy get a plus three from me. I, d- I don't know when when you can't be charmed um, as a berserker. I don't know if I've hit that level. I'm a drow. I can't be charmed. Yes, creatures that can't be charmed are immune to the effect. So brilliant. Dwayne, I think, is just going to choose to fail. Great. <laughs> yeah, I th- actually, I think yeah, Valerie's up for a rest. She don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Judge um, likes the idea of resting, but he he will like give. Um, uh, Triff a look to say as if like I know what he just did but I'm just letting it slide as he unsheaths the, the, the fourth commandment and just sticks it in the ground and then he just sits arms folded and leans against it and she just mutters under her breath this is why I don't do people <laughs> uh, Dwayne will sit uh, uh, sort of like lean back against the, the dome and say I suppose the curse can wait a bit longer <laughs> And then just sort of stare up at the uh, the ceiling. Um, and the entire time, Art is just stood on the opposite side of the dome, staring at you, Dwayne. Absolute daggers. Not saying a word, just waiting. Uh, I think once Dwayne realizes that, uh, he's going to turn, look uh, at Art and say, Would you like to talk now? Why did you leave me? Because I was afraid. That's why I do everything. I, I do everything because I'm afraid. I was, I was afraid of what your family would think of me. I was, I was afraid of those elves. I was afraid of the look in your eyes when, when you realize I'd caught you in my, in, with my slow breath. I, I was afraid of whether or not I'd meant to do it. I, I thought it was an accident, but. I was afraid that perhaps I, in a moment of panic, I had deliberately tried to slow you down. I was afraid of what would happen if I stayed. And then when you came back, I was afraid of what would happen if you caught up to me. I was... I've been afraid of... I've been afraid my whole life. He starts to walk slowly across the dome toward you. And when he's inches away from you just says it wasn't so hard to admit was it um I think Dwayne what Dwayne as Art was crossing to him kind of sat up into like a half kneeling position one hand uh, I think his right hand just kind of like dangling limply at his side and his left hand sitting uh, kind of is resting on like the side of his knee absolutely like white knuckled clenched with like his fingernails digging into his palm and uh i think like his whole that whole arm is just so tense and that whole side i think even that side of his body is so tense and the other side of his body has completely limp and he just looks up at art and he says it um I suppose the answer is yes and no. In some ways, it was the easiest thing in the world. And in other ways, it felt like... It felt like destroying who I am. Who I've tried to be. No, Art, I've been able to make anyone believe whatever I wanted for so long including myself it can be difficult sometimes to be forced to peel back the lies and look at yourself for who you 
truly are. But uh, that's that's who I am. I'm a coward. Uh, and I think he he'll look up and for the first time in this whole conversation, uh, possibly since Art's death, uh, he'll look up and make full eye contact with Art and he'll say, I'm sorry. Whatever you choose, whatever retribution, I submit. He leans even closer towards you. and just kisses you on the forehead and places a hand on your cheek squeezes it just a little bit it says, if you ever lie to someone you love again you'll see me once more do you understand? yes good and he vanishes uh, I think Dwayne just fully collapses to the ground uh, and starts I, I think it's like it starts as like like an all fours kind of collapse and then just transitions pretty quickly to a full like limp on the ground uh, heaving and sobbing hey what happened hey hey, hey are you okay hey 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 he's collapsed hey help uh, what happened I'm just going to look him over. Hey. 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 Get yourself together, man. What happened? Uh, I think Dwayne, as people are, like, picking him up, is going, as D- Judge, like, li- lifts him up, is just going to grab Judge in a tight little, a tight little hug, like, his as far as his arms will go around uh, Judge's body, and then just sob into Judge's armor. Oh, my gosh. The, I... Where'd that other guy go? <sighs> oh, man. Okay, okay, buddy, okay, 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 you, you, whatever it is you've got welling up inside you, you, you let that, you let that all out, you, you understand? You let it all out right now. Damn it, Judge is crying too. <laughs> oh, keep it inside you and use it for the fight! <laughs> um, judge is crying too, like, it could do to have some quiet right now. We just hold each other and cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's grown ass man tears yeah hell yeah <laughs> I think as he's crying without realizing it Dwayne is going to start transforming back into a dragon as if like by letting go of all of this it's just like he lets go of the halfling form so as you guys are crying and embracing <laughs> Uh, you're just suddenly like holding something that's much larger now. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! Oh oh! Oh, 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 da- oh, oh no! He's the oh, dragon! dragon! He's a dragon! Yeah! Damn it! Oh Bobby, my god! She like wields her. <laughs> uh, what she got with her? <laughs> Weapon. <laughs> her battle axe. Judge swings around at a screen and tries to meet the meet the attack. <laughs> ah! But he's a dragon. Yeah, but his. He's, he's kind of my friend, so I can't let you kill him. But D- he's a it, dragon! I have no idea what's going on. So what if he's a dragon? That's my friend! I have sworn an oath to kill all dragons! Yeah, but you, this, you know this guy. He's different. He's not... Why do you need to get get off? And I tried to, like, back her how's, off. How's this affecting the heart? It is getting incredibly tight. Yeah, it's so... Uh, okay, oh, okay, like, as it's getting pushed up to... This the- is what happens when you <laughs> let dragons in! You can't just this bloody is what murder happens. this. We need his. We need his strength. We need his strength. We can't just kill him when these murderous plants are killing everyone. We need someone as strong and as big as this guy to kill all the plants. Fine, but when we kill the plants, I'm killing him. Uh, uh, no deal. Deal. But, uh, no, no deal. No, that's a terrible deal. That, that what do you doesn't think I'm sound like a good plan. Very good no, deal. it's not oh. a good deal. No, this is this is getting very tight in here. This is not much room. Uh, okay. Everybody, oh, calm no. down. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just oh, being squeezed against the side of the room. Okay, I, I'm glad okay. you opened up to us, but you're. You're killing us. You're killing Sorry. us. I'll, I'll shrink a bit. I'll shrink a bit. Uh, he, he holds up kind of a scaly hand uh, as he's ha- kind of like in a half uh, halfling, half dragon form right now. And he says, uh, I don't. I, I, he, he's going to look at he's going to look at Valerie and say, I have no quarrel with you, but 
clearly you have a quarrel with me, so uh, if you would please be willing to set aside your your oath for just the time being, I'm sure we can come to some sort of an understanding after after we avenge your your uh, sailors, troops, crew. Well, I mean, they died. It's quite upsetting, but it doesn't bother me that much. <laughs> right. <laughs> After we stop the plants from consuming this entire land. Yeah, I just don't want to die. After we prevent that, then we can... We'll have a talk. Then How's we'll that? renegotiate, shall we? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I've... I'm really having a moment right now. I don't know if that's clear. <laughs> she, <laughs> she sort of... Very awkwardly puts her battle axe sort of back on her back and sort of, sort of awkwardly yes. and frumpily just sort of steps away and is like, I uh, think I understand. I'll leave you be for now. Uh, seeing that she's put away her axe, Dwayne puts away his scales and wings, essentially, and shrinks back into uh, a halfling. Okay, that explains so much. Yes. <laughs> oh, and I, I, I should describe, because I don't think we've described Dwayne's dragon form, have we? No. no, it's always just been blue blur and wings, but yeah. So yeah, he's got like uh, b- uh, bright blue scales that are the same color as his facial hair uh, and his this bright, shiny copper underbelly. Uh, it looks like he's sub it, it looks like he's a hybrid of like anyone who would know dragons would know that it's not common for a dragon to have both a chromatic color and a metallic color. So it likely would indicate like mixed parentage uh, between different kinds of dragons. Mm-hmm. And actually the copper uh, is a similar shade to his, to Dwayne's actual skin. Pretty mm, Beautiful dragon. I want to see it in real yeah. life. <laughs> oh, I think Dwayne is actually going to look then at everyone else and say, I, I have a bit, a bit more of a confession to make. Um, of course there's more. Okay. Yes. Let's see if I can keep up. <laughs> uh, I'm not actually named Dwayne. Uh, I'm called Dwayne, but it's not really my birth name. Uh, my name is Dontavian. So, you know, that's, that's me. Dontavian. Don't, uh... Yes. Dontavian, yes. Um, you know what? When Tarnak and I first met you, he whispered to me that he knew you were lying. He knew that you fell from the sky... He knew something about you wasn't right, but he trusted you anyway. And here we are. So, with all your stuff going on, and whatever trauma you've managed to pull yourself through, it's nice to finally meet you, Dantavian. And Judge will hold out his hand. Uh, Dwayne will uh, shake however many fingers he can fit in his hand uh, (laughs) and say, It's nice to meet you too, Judge. Hmm. And I'm a woman of honor, so... I promise I won't kill you until we renegotiate. Oh, thank you. Uh, Dwayne reaches with his other hand to shake. As, as he's shaking Judge's hand, he's got, he tries to shake as many of uh, Valerie's fingers as he can. Okay. Shall we have... Let's, let's, let's sit back down a bit and try this again. Just catch our breath. And, and, and please, please get some rest. You all look so, so bad. Yes. So bad. Thanks. Uh, would we like some more music? I could I could simply keep playing that song I was playing before. Just music, no more talking. Yes. Everybody chill out, okay? Come okay. On. Here we go. Uh Dwayne's gonna pull out his hurdy gurdy and continue playing the song. The growth music that he was playing earlier. No. Um so yeah, once again having settled down, a good eight hours passed. You all have again small small chit chat. You, you prepare yourselves, sort of uh, prepare anything that you need for your spells. Um, judge, you spend a little bit of time sort of with your sword, practicing uh, with the fourth commandment, practicing some, um, some um, I don't know anything about swords. <laughs> Maneuvers? I can do some movements. I can probably... Move some movements. Try to, There's just about yeah, enough space. Try to commune with it because the sword is still a mystery. All that stuff. Yeah. Um, Valerie, how are you keeping yourself entertained during this? Um... I think she's just like sitting, muttering, maybe doing a few press ups, having a look at Dwayne, and just, yeah, just sort of keeping herself to herself. And when she falls asleep, she snores. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, and she's she sort of has a moment with like where she sort of looks at her tattoo and is like, <laughs> looks a bit like internally at odds with herself. So uh, yeah, you all basically have a long rest, so you can mark that on your sheets as uh, you all begin uh, preparing, getting ready for what's about to happen. Uh, Triff talks you through talks you through the ritual. Um, now, in mechanical terms, for your awareness, uh, what you realize is, uh, as she's pointing out uh, different like formula and stuff in her notebooks, um, a little arcane uh, markings and things, that, uh, yeah, mechanically, how it's going to work is that once she has started the ritual, anybody will be able to contribute magical energy. But what that means is that you essentially need to pump 25 levels worth of spell slots into this ritual. So if you don't have spell slots, you can't do that. You can't do that. Cool. Oh my gosh. But anybody with spell slots will be able to contribute to the ritual just by like putting in 25 levels worth of spell slots into As it. As a group. Not As a group, yeah. Good, because <laughs> I don't have that many. <laughs> um, Triff has to start the ritual off, uh, but then once it's going, anybody, anybody can contribute. And even if Triff were to fall, the way she has set it up, is that the rest of you could still have a chance to succeed. Hmm. And that's kind of what you get from her explanation. Okay. Well, good luck with that, you three. <laughs> <sighs> yes. Uh, well, you're a part of this too. Why don't you guard us? I'll, f- I'll, I'll fight my bloomers off. Fine. I uh, can't pump any magic in, I'm afraid. That's absolutely fine. We just need... Yeah, uh, if you can fight all those plants off, uh, keep us... Uh, that I can do. That yeah. I can do. We need to, we need to get really close to uh, the stone, though. So uh, we we'll, might need to fight our way through to get there. Um, am I fighting the plants or the stone? The plants. The plants. Okay. Uh, if, if we need to get in close, I might be able to teleport us there. Just you and I, uh, Triff... If you wish, I have a spell, a dimension door. Right. Uh, I could teleport us to the stone, uh, but only one other person could come with me. So, uh, David, how far away are we from the stone? Oh, uh, probably about 50 feet or so. Um, actually, from, from the dome, uh, you can just about see into the, the main chamber of this space. Um, and as you've waited eight hours, it's now sort of daylight. Um, and as you sort of all of you gather at the edge of the uh, edge of the dome and sort of peer through it. Um, what you ta- can see are is a massive circle in this open cave of nine large standing stones. All of them, again, covered in moss, covered in uh, overgrowth. Um, but at the top of this cavern, um, almost like an oculus in the ceiling, is an open space that's letting sunlight through, which gives you a good uh, view of the entire thing. And for a sight of, like, natural beauty, it does take your breath away a little bit. But you can see, as Triff sort of points out, on the other side of the circle, um, one of the the stones in particular has a massive um, crack running up the front of it. Um, and all around that are quite thick roots and vines, much thicker than every, everywhere else. Um, so it's very obvious which one it is that you're aiming for. Hmm. Okay, well, as soon as I leave this dome, it will uh, disappear. Uh, so uh, perhaps if you can get us as close as possible, then the other two, you can uh, be attacking any vines that come away around but it. we uh, won't be near you if you're teleported. But sh- we won't be able to protect you. Will you be able to catch up? Yeah. Okay. Or perhaps we move as a unit. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm not so... Uh, experienced at the fighting anything, let alone Well, plants. I would say if you want us to protect you, we should be by you protecting you, right? No, we should stay outside to stop stuff coming in to get to them. Look, the two of us can post up outside. Isn't the stuff coming out of the rock, though? <sighs> How about we begin our journey together, and then if things seem as though they might be quite desperate, I can teleport myself and the professor into the crack while the rest of you keep them off of us. Otherwise, we can simply travel together as a unit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because basically, as soon as I think I'll, as I'll drop this uh, hut, uh, I, I, things could be coming at us from all directions. So, uh, Right. All right. Be ready. All right, let's do it. 
Dwayne's gonna Shh. Dwayne's gonna yeah draw his rapier in one hand uh, <laughs> and then like sort of and then with, still kind of holding it put it on the uh, the handle of the hurdy gurdy which he's holding under his other arm preparing to either start swinging or casting spells whichever comes first <laughs> um, and Triff is gonna be ready to cast mage armor on herself as soon as she drops the heart amazing I will be raging and frenzying as soon as the dome drops um, mm-hmm. George is gonna cast um, bless on uh, the three of uh, the three of you and plus you get a plus you get aura of protection anyway for any saves but you got you will have bless now remind me what that does is that a- yeah it's a d4 you add a d4 so you add a plus three on top of your normal stuff because of aura of protection and then you roll a d4 for bless brilliant okay uh, well uh, let's let's go fix that stone shall we uh, I'll, I'll count us down three two one and that's where we're on the episode. <laughs> oh, <laughs> delightful. Well done. Yeah. So much. Oh, my God. Oh. You have been listening to David Knight as your dungeon master, Jeremy Cobb as Dwayne Fabulosa, Daryl Bailey as Judge, Vicky Gaskin as Valerie. And Grace Kelly Miller as Triffany. Original music by David Knight. And this episode was edited by Pippa Beckford. If you enjoy No Small Roles, please consider rating and reviewing the show. Tell your friends, subscribe, and follow us on all social media. Thank you for listening to the 